guidance that we give you will be given a mentor and uh, the mentor will be like a buddy to you you can talk to him you can talk to uh, uh, them regarding your academic issues and non academic concerns anything at all they'll make a study plan for you they'll hold your hand and they make sure that you uh, comfortably pass all your examinations and uh, we have three different subscription models in the basic plan we have pre recorded sessions live classes and quick revision exam modules and in the standard plan we have pre recorded classes as well as live doubt clarification and live doubt class uh, live classes and the premium model is all in one where you get one on one guidance live classes pre recorded sessions quick revision examination modules and everything and you can use my coupon code dr sushma20 for any additional description across all three subscriptions okay yes so this is the tentative schedule that we have and after these two classes we'll be having revision and uh, we'll hopefully be able to finish everything that we have planned in the stipulated time okay yes now let's look at the clinical case scenario so what do we have we have a 55 year old male patient who presents to us with difficulty in closing his left eye okay drooping of mouth on the left side and diminished taste sensation from the anterior two thirds of tongue which cranial nerve is most likely involved okay let's just you know you may not know everything about cranial nerves but looking at the history let's just try and understand what nerve could it be what is cranial nerve 2 cranial nerve 2 is the optic nerve optic nerve is mainly what is the function of optic nerve it is concerned with vision so do we have any problem with vision over here the person has difficulty in closing his left eye but there is no diminished vision there is no diplopia um, there is no squint or anything so i can clearly rule out that cranial nerve 2 is not the answer then cranial nerve 5 cranial nerve 5 is the trigeminal nerve isn't it now trigeminal nerve has both sensory as well as motor functions sensory functions is it carries all the uh, general sensations of the face like pain temperature vibration proprioception and all of this do we have anything mentioned regarding the pain temperature and all of this in the question no and when it comes to motor nerve we have mandibular we have uh, maxillary so mandibular mainly supplies the muscles of mastication do we have any problem with mastication nothing at all so cranial nerve phi can easily be ruled out then next nerve we have is the ninth nerve ninth nerve is the glossopharyngeal nerve so glossopharyngeal nerve mainly supplies the posterior two thirds of tongue isn't it anterior two thirds is not supplied by gloss glossopharyngeal rather the posterior two thirds of tongue is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve the afferent or the taste sensation from the posterior two thirds of tongue is from glossopharyngeal nerve or the ninth nerve so the question here says it is anterior two thirds which is affected so obviously i can rule out ninth cranial nerve as well so what is the one nerve that is left out seventh cranial nerve which is the facial nerve now facial nerve obviously what are the functions or what are the structures that it supplies it supplies muscles of facial expression which also involves orbicularis oculi correct and it also supplies the anterior two thirds of tongue that it carries the sensation from the anterior two thirds of tongue so by giving looking at the given history here i can comfortably say that cranial nerve is the nerve which is injured whether it is left side or the right side obviously left side guys remember always nerve injury causes ipsilateral deficits whereas nucleus injury contralateral or umn injury of any nerve upper motor neuron injury of any nerve will cause contralateral whereas nerve injury right umn causes contralateral that is nucleus injury whereas the lmn or the nerve injury causes ipsilateral damage so by looking at all the history and the information that we have can comfortably say that this is due to injury to the left 
facial nerve okay i hope you are sort of getting accustomed to which side or how the class is going to progress right next now look at the cranial nerve nuclei guys understanding cranial nerve nuclei is going to solve a lot of questions for you in your prof as well as in your for your entrance examination this is not so important for prof examination but having a solid understanding of cranial nerve nuclei will help you solve many questions in medicine as well all right so basically we have a developing neural tube which has a notochord and so many other different structures which give rise to different different structures in the central nervous system correct we have a neuroectoderm we have the notochord and we have the developing neural tube and all of we come to all of this later in later classes while we are doing embryology but for now know that we have a developing neural tube which gives rise to so many different structures in the cns all right now the wall of a recently closed new uh, neural tube consists of neuroepithelial cells that divide rapidly and producing more and more neuroepithelial cells which constitute the neuroepithelial layer okay once the neural tube closes this then what happens is there will be addition of so many layers giving rise to a marginal layer correct or a mantle layer so basically this is the neural tube i have and as and when the neural tube closes and as the cells start dividing rapidly it results in the formation of different layers like marginal layers and mantle layers as a result of continuous addition of this neuroblast to the mantle layer what happens is there will be a thickening on the either sides of the neural tube which is called as the dorsal and the ventral thickening as you can see in this particular cut section there is a thickening on the ventral as well as the dorsal aspect so these thickenings are called as alar plate and basal plate alar plate and basal plate the ventral thickenings are called as basal plate the dorsal thickenings are called as alar plate okay the ventral and the dorsal thickenings basically So if any of you guys are uh, from Bangalore, so then you would know that there's a very famous college in Bangalore called, uh, called as APS College. So AP, that is alar plate is mainly sensory and the uh, basal plate is mainly motor. Okay, alar plate is sensory, basal plate is mainly motor. And it is arranged in such a way that the basal plate is more medial and the alar plate is more lateral. So, all of the motor nuclei that we have, any of the motor nuclei that we have, they're all medial. And all the sensory nuclei we have, they're all lateral. So, if you, if you, you know, talk about any of the brainstem syndromes that we have already done, let's say, for example, if I take Weber syndrome. So, Weber syndrome, Weber syndrome mainly involves pyramidal tract involvement plus third nerve palsy, which is a medial midbrain syndrome so you can see pyramidal tract involvement and third nerve third nerve is predominantly a motor nerve so any nucleus that is having motor component or predominantly motor is always medial and any cranial nerve that is sensory is always lateral and this alar plate and basal plate is separated by a sulcus called as sulcus limitans which we have already understood Okay, now let's come to cranial nerve nuclei and how they are formed. 
For example, guys, if I have to explain how cranial nerve nuclei are actually divided, let us consider face. Okay. In the face, what are the different structures we have? So now we have basically eyes, then we have nose, then we have mouth, then we have a tongue, and we have uh, glands like there's a parotid gland, and there is a lacrimal gland, and there is submandibular gland, sublingual glands, and we have so many different muscles like muscles of mastication, and uh, there is muscles of facial expression, and in the eye we have so many different structures. Right, there is a pupil and there is pupillary muscles and so on and so forth. So broadly, broadly, if I look at the, uh, you know, face, what I can say is, what are the different structures I have in eye? Number one, I have muscles of facial expression. Correct. Muscles of facial expression. We have uh, frontalis muscle. We have orbicularis oculi muscle. And uh, then we have, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, muscles of mastication also. What are these different muscles of mastication we have? We have temporalis muscle, we have medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, masseter muscle. So these are muscles of mastication, correct? A group of muscles which, which belong to these two classes that are supplied by facial nerve as well as fifth cranial that is trigeminal mandibular nerve, isn't it? Yes. Then apart from this, we also have glands. Like let's say we have parotid gland, lacrimal gland, and uh, we also have, uh, you know, submandibular gland, sublingual glands, and all of these glands are there. Isn't it? Agree? Along with the glands, we also have, you know, uh, certain smooth muscles. Let's say in our eye, we have dilator and sphincter pupillary muscles. What are these muscles? These are smooth muscles. Isn't it? Along with whatever the motor uh, muscles that we have, let's say all of these major muscles, we have also these kutti kutti minor muscles like the smooth muscles. Right? Apart from this, apart from this, what else do we have? Apart from all the muscles of mastication, muscles of facial expression, in the eye we have all the extraocular muscles. Right? Apart from all of this, what else do we have? Number one, we have the other structure that we did not speak about is the tongue. Correct? We have tongue, which we haven't spoken about. And also extraocular muscles. Extraocular muscles. So, if you broadly look at what are the different columns that we have or what are the different muscle structures that we have. Number one, we have all the muscles that are derived from the pharyngeal arches. Correct? Muscles of facial expression, muscles of mastication. Then, we also have all of these glands and smooth muscles. Right? And also, we have muscles which are derived from somites. I hope you have some idea about embryology. Otherwise, just look at your face and think what different things you have in your face and try to divide them under different columns. That's it. This is exactly how cranial nerve nuclei are also divided. The body is so sophisticated, guys. It has divided a simple structure like your face into different columns. So what has God done? He has done ki, achha, hai. muscles of facial expression, muscles of mastication, aap log ek side chale jao. Then what else do we have? We have glands and smooth muscles. Okay, They are kind of related to one another because they are all involuntary. Isn't it? You are not voluntarily doing anything. Okay, tum log, you, you guys go together in stand in one line. So smooth muscles and all of these glands, all of these involuntary structures, it is in one column. Then what is left out? Tongue and extraocular muscles. Okay, you guys are left out. Now you go stand in one line. So this is how... The functions or the anatomically, the face is divided depending upon its origin, depending upon how it is developed embryonically. This is how God has done beautifully. Right? And this is how even the cranial nerve supply is also divided. Cranial nerve nuclei supply is also divided. So the first column is G S E. General somatic efferent which has all the muscles that are derived from somites. What in, in, in if you look at these three different um, you know uh, uh, different uh, patches that we have made out of these three 
which is that group of muscles which are derived from somites tongue and extraocular muscles so any nerve any cranial nerve nuclei that supplies the tongue and supplies the extraocular muscle will come under gse easy anything to memorize over here very simple guys anything any cranial nerve nuclei that supplies the tongue and extraocular muscle will come under gse second column which god has created for us second column is s v e special visceral efferent s v e is that column which has all the muscles that are developed from the pharyngeal arches all the muscles that are developed from the pharyngeal arches now look at these three uh, you know groups that we have made out of these three groups what is that group of muscle which are developed from the pharyngeal arches muscles of facial expression muscles of mastication so any nerve or any nuclei that supplies muscles of facial expression and muscles of mastication will come under this group s v e s v e special visceral efferent next general visceral efferent the only group that is left out belongs to general visceral efferent and what are those nerves of the nuclei that supply gve all of the nuclei that are concerned with supplying any glands in the face as well as smooth muscles like my pupillary muscles in the face just look at your face in the mirror and see what you are seeing i'm seeing eyes eyes meaning extraocular muscles extraocular muscles okay and also i have certain smooth muscles extraocular muscles are under my control but smooth muscles pupillary muscles are not under my control right that's a smooth muscle then what else do i have i have lacrimal gland then come back uh, come down a little bit i have muscles of mastication muscles of facial expression zygomatic zygomaticus temporalis masseter and pterygoidal muscles all of these muscles are there then i have a tongue then i have all of the glands present here look at your face and try to keep each and every structure across these three different columns and that is your cranial nerve nuclei we make it so complicated we don't understand what is gse sve gv just look at your face guys and try to divide the structures as per their function and you get your cranial nerve nuclei classification done that is exactly what what this busy looking slide tells us correct so first is the general somatic efferent gse so what was there under gse all of the somites derived muscles somites derived muscles look at the second special visceral efferent sve was having all of the muscles which are derived from the pharyngeal arches correct then comes the gve this is the one which is containing all of the glands and the smooth muscles glands and smooth muscles understanding as simple as it gets okay this is from the basal plate why basal plate is all motor let's come to sensory sensory guys what are the different sensations that are there from the face number one sensation is the pain temperature and all of this that we already know which is carried by fifth cranial nerve other than that we have some certain special sensations also like vision hearing olfaction taste all of these are special sensations as well from the face correct other than this what else do we have other than this what else do we have in face position sense correct and olfaction and general sensations from the face so again applying the same concept here also we have divided the functions into same look at the special somatic afferent special special meaning i'm talking about some special senses here what are the special senses ear by vestibulo cochlear nerve and also vision vision is also a special sense general somatic afferent general sensations from face general sensation from the body wall or general sensation from the face head and uh, face which is my pain temperature crude touch fine touch so all of these are examples of general somatic 
afferentum. Then special visceral afferent. See what is viscera in the face? Anything that is inside of what is not seen. What is not seen when you look at your mirror is what is viscera. Okay? What you are not seeing here, your taste buds. Can you see your taste buds when you look at your mirror? No. Can you see palate? Can you see oropharynx? Can you see epiglottis? No. Any of the sensations which are coming from these structures is viscera, is the visceral sensations. So, special visceral afferent. Special meaning it has to be something related to special senses. So, obviously, taste. Taste and other sensations coming from palate, oropharynx and epiglottis. General visceral afferent. General meaning not special. General, like for example, pain, temperature and uh, any uh, vibration, proprioception, all of these uh, you know, sensations which is coming from the viscera, from the same structures like epiglottis, oropharynx and all of these structures is the general visceral afferent. So afferent also can be clearly, clearly divided into number one, special somatic afferent. So specially, what are the special sensations that are there when you look at your face? Number one, hearing. Number two, eyes. Number three, olfaction you cannot see because all olfactory pathway. So special somatic afferent is sorted. Next, what is the general sensation that, that is there from your face? Pain, temperature, crude touch, all of this is carried by trigeminal nerve. That is sorted. Special visceral afferent. So, we, we have part of head and neck which cannot be seen, which is the viscera. For example, mouth, epiglottis, uh, you know, oropharynx. From all of these structures, what is the special sensation coming? Taste. So, taste and smell becomes the special visceral afferent. Similarly, we have general visceral afferent also. Other than taste and smell, any other sensation coming from the viscera. Anything difficult here, guys? If you just imagine your face in the mirror and then cranial nerve nuclei classification will be sorted. Right? Now, let's look at what definition says. Somatic meaning anything that you see. Anything that you see in front of mirror is somatic. Visera means anything that you cannot see. Afferent is sensory, efferent is motor, no doubt in that. General is general sensation from entire body. Special meaning special senses like olfaction, gustation, equilibrium, vision. All of this is special senses. Understood? Any doubt in this? Any doubt at all? Very, very simple. Okay? Very simple to understand. Yes. Now, let's come to the cranial nerve nerves. There are basically 12 pairs of cranial nerves which leave the brain and pass through different foramina and fissures in the skull, which we will talk about in our subsequent classes. Okay. All these nerves are distributed in the head and neck except for, except for vagus nerve, which also goes to, which also goes to abdomen and thorax. So, first thing or the first assignment that I give you is to memorize this. You have to know all 12 cranial nerves by heart. Even in your dreams, if somebody wakes you up from sleep and asks what is second cranial nerve, you should be able to tell the name. Okay, you should know this by heart. Should not get confused. So, first olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducent, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, hypoglossals. All 12 cranial nerves you should know by heart. Okay. Now look at how they are coming from the brain stem or from the brain. I have shown this image so many times. By now, you should have, you should, you should not go wrong with this image. So what is this nerve that is coming? So this is the first cranial nerve, olfactory. Then you can clearly see optic chiasma and everything. This is the second cranial, sorry, this is the second cranial nerve. Then where is, what is this nerve which is coming from the Midbrain. This is the midbrain area, right? This is the midbrain area. What is the nerve that is coming from midbrain? This is the third cranial nerve. And what is this only slender nerve that is coming from posterior? This is the fourth cranial nerve. And from the pons, from the pons, from the body of the pons, what do we have? From the body of the pons, we have fifth cranial nerve. And from the pontomedullary junction, in one order, 6, 7, and 8. 
Okay. Then what is that one nerve that comes between if this is the pyramid and this is the olive? What is the mnemonic I told you? Four. This is the hypoglossal nerve, which is the 12th cranial nerve. What is left out? 9, 10, 11. So these are 9, 10. And you can see the spinal accessory, accessory nerve coming from below. This is the 11th cranial nerve. This picture should be imprinted in your brain. Okay. Very easy to identify the nerves if you have understood the anatomy. Okay. You don't have to mug up. It's that easy to identify all of these nerves. Now, let's look at the motor nerve nuclei. So, in the general somatic efferent column. So, this is the GSE column. GSE column, what did I tell you? GSE column is about different muscles that are developing from the somites. Now, what were those muscles? Number one, extraocular muscles. Number two, tongue muscles. Correct? Extraocular and tongue muscles. What are the different extraocular muscles? We have superior rectus, inferior rectus, oblique muscles and all of this. All of superior rectus, inferior rectus and everything is supplied by third cranial nerve. All of my superior uh, uh, oblique and inferior oblique, superior oblique is supplied by fourth cranial nerve. Later rectus is supplied by sixth cranial nerve. If you talk about tongue, Tongue is mainly, mainly supplied by hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve is, you have to tell me the number. You, you, should, you should know this by heart. There is no way you're going to get these questions wrong. Okay. Hypoglossal nerve is, hypoglossal nerve is 12th cranial nerve. Where does it come from? Between pyramid and olive. So, 3, 4, 6 and 12 belongs to very, very easy to remember GSE. Remember, GSE is the muscle from somites, external oblique and tongue. Sorry, extraocular muscles and tongue. Okay. Extraocular muscles and tongue, which are supplied by these nuclei. If there's any damage to GSE column, you'll have problem with these muscles. Then go to the SVE. SVE is the column that is, uh, you know, that mainly supplies muscle from the pharyngeal arches. So, our first arch is supplied by which, which nerve? Mandibular nerve. Mandibular nerve is supplying mainly the muscles of mastication. Second arch is the facial nerve. Facial nerve mainly supplies muscles of facial expressions. Now, anything difficult to remember this? Anything at all which is difficult to remember this? No. Why? Because you've understood the concept. You've understood the concept. Other than this, what else comes from the 4th and 3rd, 4th and 6th arches? We also have pharynx, larynx, palate muscles, sorry, uh, you know, pharynx and larynx muscles, which are supplied by what all nuclei? Glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory. So these 9th, 10th and 11th nerve nuclei together is called as nucleus ambiguous. Correct? 9, 10 and 11 together is called as nucleus ambiguous. So in the special visceral column, if you know the pharyngeal arches, you will not take any time to write what are the different nuclei that come in SVE. Right? Then GVE, general visceral efferent. What are the visceral muscles that we have already told you? Something related to number one, smooth muscles. Number two, tongue muscles. Smooth muscle, what are the muscles that we have? Smooth muscles in the eye, sphincter pupillae, dilator pupillae. All of these pupillary muscles are supplied by which cranial nerve? Third cranial nerve, oculomotor nerve via edinger westphal nucleus, isn't it? Then all of the muscles of my tongue is supplied by different nerves. We have glossopharyngeal is also there, but mainly... Mainly in the GVE column. Excuse me, guys. One second. I was getting the. Okay. So mainly, mainly the tongue in the visceral efferent column. If you see in the tongue, it is mainly supplied by vagus. Okay. Mainly tongue and other palatal structures and everything that is supplied by vagus. And also we have efferents to glands present also right what are the different glands that we have 
we have lacrimal gland we have a uh, parotid gland and we have all of this sublingual submandibular glands w who supplies to all of these glands all of the glands are supplied by facial nerve except for parotid gland which is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve parotid gland is supplied by ninth cranial nerve which is glossopharyngeal nerve all of the other glands are supplied by facial nerves to summarize if you if you have to summarize this for smooth muscles it is mainly supplied for the eye as well as in the tongue for the tongue we have third cranial nerve and for the uh, eye we have the third cranial nerve for the tongue we have the ninth cranial nerve for the glands for all of the glands in the face, it is supplied by the seventh cranial nerve. For parotid, it is supplied by ninth cranial nerve. So the general visceral efferent column is going to have third cranial nerve. Superior salivatory nucleus is seven. Inferior is nine. Dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. Okay. All of this together constitutes the three, seven, nine, ten constitute the parasympathetic in the cranial nerves. So, 3, 7, 10 are the parasympathetic. Then come to somatic. Special somatic afferent column. Special somatic. Special senses, meaning it has to be something to do with vision. It has to be something to do with vision or hearing or smell or taste. But we are talking about somatic. So, obviously, obviously, taste is gone. Smell is gone. Vision and hearing. Correct? So talk about special somatic. So, when it comes to hearing, I have vestibular and cochlear nerve. When it comes to vision, I have optic nerve. Anything difficult here? Of course not. Yes. Next, general somatic afferent. We are talking about general sensation. And what is it? Somatic. No points for guessing. Obviously, here I am talking about fifth cranial nerve. That is fifth cranial nerve. That is fifth cranial nerve, which is my which is my trigeminal nerve. So, what are the different nuclei I have? Mesencephalic nucleus, main sensory nucleus, nucleus of spinal tract of uh, trigeminal nerve. I hope we know this mesencephalic. And it's a big nucleus like this, mesencephalic, chief and spinal. I hope you know this right. Next, visceral afferent. Visceral afferent. So here we are clubbing both. General visceral afferent plus special visceral afferent. We are clubbing both here because there's not much of a difference when it comes to this. So obviously, what is a special visceral afferent? Anything that you cannot see on your, on your face, which is smell as well as taste. So, for SVE, it is very easy. For smell, we have first cranial nerve. For taste, we have seventh and ninth cranial nerve. What is the seventh cranial nerve? For anterior two-thirds of tongue, ninth cranial. For posterior, one-thirds of tongue. Together, all of this relay in one big nucleus, which is called as nucleus of tractus solitarius. Okay? Together, all of these nerve fibers relay in one nucleus which is called as nucleus of tractus solitarius which is located in the mid posterior tegmentum of medulla then general visceral afferent it's general sensation like pain temperature and all of this again sva uh, sorry gva component also goes and relays in the nucleus tractus solitarius via the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves Okay, I hope you have gotten a bit of an idea about this. To summarize it again, guys, just to summarize this, general somatic efferent mainly supplies all of the muscles that are derived from somites, which includes smooth muscles as well as glands. Right? Then, gen special visceral efferent mainly involves all of those muscles which are derived from pharyngeal arches. Then what is left out? What is left out? General visceral efferent which supplies all of my... What else? What does GVE supply? If you guys have to tell me. What does GVE supply? 
sorry i made a mistake here sorry so basically the gse gse supplies sorry there's been a, a mistake here guys general somatic uh, supplies the muscle from somites basically the tongue as well as extra ocular muscle okay in the gve column is the one which supplies the glands and the smooth muscles glands and the smooth muscles okay you have to keep revising it then you'll get a hang of this next general visceral afferent plus special visceral afferent this mainly concerns with taste as well as smell and general sensations from viscera general sensations from viscera and of course we have general somatic afferent special somatic afferent general somatic afferent all of the general sensations from face special somatic afferent is hearing as well as vision by looking at this it's so easy to write now extraocular is mainly 3 4 and 6 tongue muscles are mainly 12th isn't it tongue muscle is mainly 12th what is it 12 hypoglossal nerve whereas special visceral efferent very easy 7th and 5 and 9 10th and 11th general visceral efferent again very easy third nerve then we have 7th 9 and 10 basically this is the parasympathetic group general visceral afferent and sva all of this they relay in one big nucleus which is the nucleus of tractus solitarius correct nucleus of tractus solitarius for face what do we have trigeminal nerve which is fifth cranial nerve special somatic we have optic nerve second cranial nerve and my vestibulo cochlear which is eighth cranial nerve this is how different cranial nerve nuclei are divided okay if you have understood this half of your cranial uh, nerves is done you you have understood the function you have understood how they are supplying also all you need to know is how they are coming out of cranial cavity out of this the most important is 3 5 and 7 these are the most important nerves that you must no if you have understood this you are done you are you are you have understood cranial nerves through and through okay now olfactory nerve as we have already discussed belongs to sva column optic nerve ssa why special somatic special somatic right it's a special sense whereas of uh, olfactory is also special but it is visceral next oculomotor trochlear and abducens nerve 3 4 6 comes in which it comes in gse the very first column then oculomotor nervous gse and it also comes in gve guys why through edinga vespal it is supplying the constrictor and dilator pupillae ciliaris muscle sorry dilator pupillae has got nothing to do with cranial nerve actually correction over there dilator pupillae mainly has sympathetic uh, plexus theek hai it has got nothing to do with this all right now trochlear nerve trochlear nerve supplies what muscle so4 superior oblique muscle so this belong to gse column abducens nerve supplies lateral rectus lr6 so it belongs to again gse column then trigeminal nerve very big nuclei extending across midbrain pons as well as medulla oblongata this belongs to general or special general somatic or visceral somatic afferent or efferent a gsa column and also it also supplies the muscles of mastication so muscles of mastication is general or special general somatic or viscera somatic afferent or efferent e so basically trigeminal is a part of gsa gse as well correct gsa and special visceral afferent also why because it supplies all of this now let's go to uh, let's take some questions cranial nerve 5 mandibular nerve a branch of trigeminal nerve exits through which anatomical landmark so this we haven't done yet but the answer is foramen rotundum for this mandibular nerve exits through foramen rotundum so basically trigeminal nerve gives three branches ophthalmic branch mandibular branch and ma mandibular branch and maxillary branch which exits through different cranial foramina which we'll study in the next class facial nerve 
facial nerve is mainly from the muscles of muscles of pharyngeal arch so obviously supplies sve and also it gives parasympathetic preganglionic fibers to superior salivary nucleus and supplies every gland in the face head and neck region so gve as well then and it also carries anterior two thirds of tongue tongue if you have anterior two thirds anterior two thirds is by face and the posterior one third is by glossopharyngeal nerve taste sensation and this is this area is by the facial nerve okay then which cranial nerve is responsible for controlling the muscles of mastication associated with sensation of face i keep repeating this cranial nerve number 5 which is trigeminal 6 supplies lateral rectus 7 facial nerve just now we have done 8 is vestibulo cochlear nerve then vestibulo cochlear nerve is a special isn't it somatic or visceral somatic afferent or efferent afferent just basic simple concept guys you can get these answers correct next glossopharyngeal glossopharyngeal mainly supplies what muscles it also supplies all of these different structures like palatine tonsils pharyngeal regions and everything so it is general not special but it also uh, you know supplying the visceral structures it is not something that you see when you stand in front of mirror so v and it is an afferent nerve whereas the posterior two thirds of the tongue the taste sensation is carried by glossopharyngeal nerve so obviously special visceral afferent is glossopharyngeal right then we also have gsa sve and gve columns of it which is not so important for us mcq which cranial nerve controls the movement of tongue is responsible for tenth taste sensation posterior one third right just now we have discussed glossopharyngeal nerve vagus vagus is a very complex nerve just know it has gva component sva component as well as gsa component as well okay and it has it's a parasympathetic so gve component and sve component as well don't bother about this it's very complex to understand right then accessory nerve spinal accessory nerve spinal accessory nerve is only one function because it's purely motor it is sve function gloss of hypoglossal nerve gse also why it supplies the why it supplies the what is what is it supply tongue muscles all right yes next let's go to the anatomy of cranial nerves again quickly quickly we are going to revise everything but 3 5 and 7 are the most important nerves which you'll have to pay attention to now what is a pure sensory nerves pure sensory nerves are first second and eighth pure motor nerves 3 4 6 and 12 3 4 6 and 12 which actually belong to my gse column correct if you remember yes that is a pure motor function then pure sensory motor is everything else sorry mixed sensory motor is everything else this classification is very important it will it will be asked in physiology just to give an example of motor or this nerve first is the olfactory nerve olfactory is the first cranial nerve coarse is olfactory hair receptor cells central process nerve fibers bulb olfactory tract and primary olfactory cortex where is it present pre amygdaloid and piriform cortex correct and then it goes to secondary olfactory cortex so first cranial nerve is olfactory nerve you have to know this pathway it is important in physiology not so in anatomy next optic nerve optic nerve origin is mainly from the axons of the cells in the ganglionic layer of retina correct you remember from the retina optic nerve goes then it crosses over to the opposite side forming optic chiasma then it further cross uh, further continues as optic tract optic radiation then it goes in going into the respective cortex occipital lobe i hope you remember the pathway which is very very important and the lesions at different levels is also very important at this level ipsilateral blindness here is bitemporal hemianopia correct this is homonymous hemianopia i hope you know this in physiology all right then optic chiasma is situated at the junction of anterior wall and floor of the 
third ventricle optic tract emerges from the optic chiasma and passes posterior laterally around the cerebellar cerebral peduncles not so important then it culminates into lgb i have been telling this so many times in every class l for light so it is lgb m for music it is in auditory pathway auditory pathway forms which lemniscus lateral lemniscus okay these three points with respect to auditory pathways very important then we have optic radiation and visual cortex area number 18 and 19 mcqs which cranial nerve originates from olfactory bulb located in cribriform plate and ethmoid bone no points in guessing cranial nerve one okay next oculomotor nerve oculomotor nerve is the third cranial nerve what is the origin of third cranial nerve mid brain if you remember 3 4 is mid brain 6 7 8 is pontomedullary junction 9 10 11 12 is 9 10 11 12 is medulla very good yes now oculomotor nerve is two nuclei main motor nucleus is situated in the anterior part of the gray matter that surrounds the aqueduct of sylvius in the mid brain okay then it mainly receives corticonuclear fibers from both cerebral hemispheres also it receives the tectobulbar fibers from superior colliculus okay so oculomotor nerve actually is at the level of superior colliculus correct yes and remember guys whenever you talk about a cranial nerve you basically have a cranial nerve nuclei like this which receives different afferents from cerebral cortex and also from different areas of brain from here the nerve arises okay so this is my what is this this is the nucleus of nucleus of any nerve any cranial nerve which gets its afferent from the cerebral cortex efferent from the nucleus is actually the cranial nerve that goes and supplies the whatever the designated structure that it has to supply if the if at all there is any decussation it always happens at this level okay so when the nerve comes out it is going to cause only the ipsilateral manifestations whereas that is the lower motor neuron whereas upper motor neuron injury causes contralateral okay it's a little higher level concept but just for your information all right next Oculomotor nerve mainly emerges at the anterior surface of the midbrain. So, if this is at the level of superior colliculus, it arises, you know, from the oculomotor uh, nuclei like this and it emerges on the anterior surface of the midbrain and it passes between two important arteries, posterior cerebral and superior cerebellar artery. Posterior cerebral and superior cerebellar artery which makes it extremely vulnerable to brain aneurysm. As it passes further, it becomes a content in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. Finally, it divides into superior and inferior rami and it supplies different muscles of external, uh, sorry, muscles of extraocular muscles, muscles of eye basically. Okay, very simple course guys, starts from the nucleus, comes down, passes between these two major arteries, posterior cerebral and superior cerebellar. As it comes down, becomes a content of the lateral wall of cavernous sinus and ends up supplying the extraocular muscles. Simple diagram. Okay, trochlear nerve, again, not very important. Right, it lies inferior to this oculomotor nucleus at the level of inferior colliculus. Very important. Superior colliculus is third cranial nerve. Inferior colliculus is fourth cranial nerve. Facial colliculus is sixth cranial nerve nucleus. Okay, these are different nuclei at different levels. Course is not so important for you at this level. Not really important at all for you. Then abducent nerve. Abducent nerve is basically sixth cranial nerve that supplies the one and only uh, supply of this muscle that you have to know is lr6 which is lateral rectus what level does sixth cranial nerve nuclei lie it, it lies at the level of facial colliculus it lies at the level of facial colliculus if you remember if you remember when we talked about pawns what did i tell you we have the facial nerve which arises from here and it winds around the nucleus. What is this nuclei present here? This is called, what is this nuclei that is present here? This, this is the sixth cranial nerve nuclei. 
finds around this producing the an elevation called as facial facial colliculus that's all you need to know about this injury to facial colliculus causes injury to sixth cranial nerve nuclei that's all you need to know about this that's all you need to know about this okay rest of the cranial nerves we'll take up in the in in, in tomorrow's class wherein we mainly concentrate on fifth seventh and uh, uh, fifth and seventh cranial nerves along with just a word about the nerves which are left out okay very very important concepts guys we have done a lot of important concepts in uh, today's class and uh, i hope you really enjoy today's class and you've understood and you've made the best out of this i've put in a lot of efforts to make you understand this and i hope you found it useful and uh, thank you so very much guys keep studying keep keep reading and i'm sure you will reach wherever you want to reach all right i wish you all all the very best and uh, thank you so much for being here and uh, wish you good night bye guys see you have a great weekend bye bye